here's how it's going down today. I think it's probably best to start with what blockchain even is supposed to solve, so the problem that it attempts to overcome. Uh, and then I've split uh, the next two into the chain and the block. So it's named pretty well. Like the, the main core concepts are this chain idea and this block idea. And as it was a bit of a chicken and the egg, so you kind of need concepts from one to understand the other, but I found it was easier when I was learning it to start with the chain and then move into the block. So that's what I'll do. And then finally, four is going to be how we can maybe use this in a case that isn't just uh, isn't just potentially like a currency or block or a Bitcoin. All right, cool. Does that work for everyone? Any questions out of the gate? Okay. So the core problem that uh, blockchain network uh, hopes to solve is is one of trust. So uh, the question is how. Do we ultimately trust that party A is good for a transaction to party B? So traditionally, if I'm party A, the gentleman on the left, and I want to send five dollars to party B, party B needs to know that I'm trustworthy and I am good for the money. First of all, the money is a counterfeit, um, and that ultimately it's going to come through when I when I perform my end of the deal. Uh, and the way we do that is with a centralized institution like a bank or some sort of third party trust. And in doing so, we often incur a fee. Um, and I guess all uh, transactions and, and how the bank knows that both parties are good for it is with a, a general centralized ledger. Um, and then, you know, what ends up happening is you have people in different countries all over the world sending money across through these sort of centralized ledgers. And what blockchain tries to do is accomplish this says, hey, we have the internet, why don't we just give everyone the ledger, and the internet can update the ledger, and then we can do stuff like this. So anyone can pay anyone, and everyone will know that it's cool because we have the ledger. So every time somebody makes a transaction, everyone is aware that the ledger is being updated. So a new, a new block comes on the chain. Good so far? Any questions about the problem we're trying to solve? Oh, let me get my Pepsi here. Any time, uh, any, nothing so far? It's kind of hoping somebody would dive in at this point. Is this the product placement <coughs> in Pepsi? <laughs> Let me just enjoy this ice cool cherry Pepsi, courtesy of today's lunch and night. Okay, and so. Some question at this point. Yeah. You said we stay away from the Bitcoin, but again, we are going to more towards the transactional currencies at this point. So are we going to enter into it or we'll stay away from the Bitcoin? So we'll Okay, so interesting you, you bring that up. We're going to stay away from the Bitcoins, but um, the example and the best way to kind of illustrate this is with currency. Yeah, so, but think, just because that dollar sign represents, you know, money to us, it could represent anything, it could represent, like, goods, uh, you know, apples, oranges, whatever, what have you. It's just, like, it's super easy to just think of it as money for the day. Basically, all you're trying to say is it's a distributed ledger. You got it. Bingo, bingo. So, you know, the internet has made it possible to do so, and now blockchain seems to have the solution to how we can trust people on it. Because as we know, the internet is the wild west, and anyone can say whatever they want, right? Hey, can yes. you just give us a couple of examples other than currency that's currently being used for? Like, is it trading commodities, like pork bellies, or anything along those lines? Like yeah, so um, I have a couple more in depth at the end of the, the show. Okay. But, uh, but no, I think, like, um, certainly for any any transaction that you've got to be very sure that um, it's, it's the party that receives it is allowed to receive it. So if you think of like, I don't know, like medicine or something where it's very critical that that be actually what they're getting. So um, I don't know. Yeah, medicine's kind of the one I'll dive into at the end. But like you can't physically give someone a drug that they can't take. And you know they can't take it because you'll see how you can bake rules into the chain. Big Nation is a example of the example of the So Big Nation, what it is doing, it is trying to form a country and where like all the citizens are connecting as blocks, as such over there. That's a totally different concept, but again, what same one? thing used. What big, one's that? Big Nation. Big Nation? Yeah. Cool. So again, yeah. they are using a concept of like creating a country. So now you, what a country gives us. is just some security, some financial security and health. So that way they are trying to build up a digital nation kind of a thing. So that's again similar kind of concept, but cool. Just as a um, as a moderator message here, Sean Sean from Moncton 
has uh, said, this seems it would be good for contracts between parties, notarizing documents, payments, etc. There you go. There you go. Cool, we're learning. Hey, we've got the lunch into us, now we're learning. This is awesome. Okay, so to illustrate the first concept of a chain, I've put together like a little mini example. So we have four parties here, each with a copy of the ledger, and the beginning of the chain, the genesis of this blockchain. So or link number one is that Donald Trump has $10. He's the only one in the entire world with any money, and he decides to send five to Mr. Putin. Now what happens is that transaction gets broadcast to all the ledgers. Everyone can go in and say, okay, I do see that he does have the $10, and here go five is you know less than 10, that's fine, that, that works. Everyone approves it, and that, that uh, block is linked onto the chain. It's cool, everyone's ledger's updated, and we move forward. So now let's say Putin wants to send $2 to Beyonce. He can do so because we now know that Putin has $5 because he got it from Trump, and so forth and so forth. And this is how you kind of regulate that the transactions are, in fact, able to be taken through. Everyone says it's cool, it gets, it gets uh, locked on to the next one, and uh, the chain keeps rolling forward. So if, if Putin cashed out, he would be giving his coins to another party in exchange for like US dollars or something. He can never just cash out a different account. You, you can, but what happens is the exchange that would have taken, you know, given you real US dollars for the coins now has the coins. So what would happen is there'd be another transaction on the end here of Putin cashing out to, I don't know, somebody else. So, so that's how that Yeah, because some, the, the exchange now has it, and they can do what they want with it. Yo. So you said that everyone's ledger gets updated? Yep. What if they're not online, and the, well, their client's not online, or what if, uh, do, do all the ledgers have to get updated before a single transaction can happen? Yeah, okay, so. So it's like synchronous, right? I gave myself this backdoor to talk about implementation. I know that some uh, implementations have like dedicated servers that are always online. So when you do come back online, you kind of catch up. Uh, but that the system would collapse if there was only one node online. But at that point, you wouldn't be trading with anyone anyways. So that's kind of how they do that. But it's, it's such that when you do, but you could be offline for years and come on and catch up. Like I have the Ethereum wallet, and when you log on, you see the blocks updating. That really slows your stuff down. Uh, okay, so then let's, let's take a look at what would happen now if Trump goes and says, I want to send $7 to the Pope. Well, everyone, you know, transactions broadcast out, everyone goes, okay, I don't think Trump's good for seven bucks. Like, he, he's down to five based on his transaction with Mr. Putin here. So everyone goes, you know what, fake news, that doesn't count, don't put that on the chain. We're not doing that transaction. No money is exchanged hands, but we, or, or added to the chain. So that, that is the chain. Is everyone cool so far? Everyone's good? Uh, so now let's talk about block. The, the first half of today's, uh, today's topic. Um, to understand the block, we first need to understand hash. So is everyone familiar with hash? Hashing, hashing algorithm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so I, I think you probably want to wait a second. I feel like there's going to be some chimings in about six seconds yeah, from, yeah. The, from the remote people. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Just any questions got to be way louder. Okay, I'll try to repeat the questions too, if I can. Okay. So okay. repeat the question. Does everyone know what hash is? Everyone, they're going to hear familiar it really with hash. Yeah. Right beside it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm sure some of the developers in the room do, but just so we're on an even playing field. Uh, <laughs> it's another double on the top. This is a block. So this is uh, this can be any data. Um, I've chosen to, to describe a quick transaction, but you can put Moby Dick and the entire Library of Congress in there and you can still hash it into this kind of garbled string here, and it's always gonna be the same length. And you change even a character in there, and this whole thing changes. So every block is completely unique and represented by this key. Um, so if somebody is to change that five to a six, then this string comes out differently. So because of that, we can think of it like a key. Uh, and it's also important to know that you can't, from a key, reverse engineer it back to the, the data that, that made it. Yeah, one-way encryption. 
On that one-way encryption, if it was a different time of day and you went to get that specific hash, mm -hmm. you said you make a character change. <laughs> Hello. You make a character change and it will change you know, that string or that hash. Exactly. But yeah. if you were to do it, like say at 1 o'clock versus 105, would that yeah. hash change as well? So what I think you're describing is something called salt. So there are implementations where you, that does matter. So you can't replicate it ever because it, you will never be at that instant in time. But for this, it's important that anyone, you know, if you're off the system for a bit, you're going to be able to come back on and get that same uh, hash, right? So no, the time of day doesn't matter in this implementation. The reason I was asking is based also on the fact that you said every one of those hashes is unique and there's no way to reverse engineer it. So what happens if there was an exact character match and now all of a sudden you've got yeah. potential to have the so exact same hash. This is a really good question because this is what I'm going to explain next. Because this unique hash gets put into the next block. And it's going to be unique, which means the whole block's unique, which means the hash is unique. And that's how it links together, right? Cool. Make sense? Everyone cool? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Should you take how I understand it? It's like think it off as a currency, you know? There's a serial number on it. And now no one can change it. Once it is issued, it stays like this, and it can never be changed. There can be other currency notes which can be issued. So think of Fire Block as a currency note, and that's what is being exchanged later on. Thinking that way, then it makes things more clearer to me. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Cool. So now we're. This is where the crypto comes from, I guess. That hash. Okay. And then what you end up happening is this, you know, chain of blocks that are the ledger. Right? So this is what everyone has a copy of. And so what happens if somebody changes anything along the way, what happens is the hash is all the way, cascade, cascade all the way down, and then if you look at the latest hash, um, everyone sees, everyone's in agreement that it's this. So what happens is they do what's called voting. Um, in the process where they validate whether that was a good transaction or not, they'll do some voting, and everyone sort of puts their, what they think it is in the middle, and anyone who disagrees is invalidated democracy rules and, and the majority wins. <clears throat> All good so far? So that is my layman's terms of the blockchain. That's how, um, you know, I guess this is the concept, this is the idea. That was sort of delved a little bit in implementation, but how you can guarantee that this thing is valid all the way through and how nobody can cheat the system. And that's sort of the cornerstone. Um, of why we trust it and it's solved the trust problem. Okay, so this kind of gets into more of an open forum now on like where else this idea can be used. I've sort of clouded your ideas with currency, but like let's try to let's try to not think of it as currency anymore. So let's say we have a distributed ledger system, a bunch of people, but let's say that some of those people are doctors, and let's say we're on like a floor in a hospital. Um, and you know, people are administering drugs and they're they're making they're taking a record of it. So what happens is when they when they administer the drugs, that gets broadcast out to everyone, that adds on to the chain that that transaction happens. So the hospital uh, you know loses some drugs and the patients gain them just like you would lose some money and the, the, the payee or the recipient would get it. Um, and now you can you can bake rules into that data structure that says Okay, well, hold up, hold up. This, this party here isn't able to receive penicillin, so don't do it. Don't put it on the chain and warn the person trying to make that transaction. Or, you know, you've already given this guy his, his stuff for the day. Don't put it on the chain, warn on the transaction. And the, the important thing to know is that it's impossible to do them simultaneously because they have to link linearly on this chain. So you could have two people, yeah, try to come in one, like right at the same time and, and try to put the drugs on at the same time, and theoretically one's going to win. Uh, in that case, that, that guy's kind of screwed no matter what, but hopefully the doctors are a little better than that. Um, perhaps more pertinent is an example that maybe relates to us, is let's say we're on a plane and we've got flight attendants and passengers, okay? So uh, flight attendants have the FA app with a ledger on it, passengers have the PAX app with a ledger on it. So they can start buying things and Ship, or the uh, aircraft knows what how much pizza they have, so you can't sell pizza you don't have, and it can't get put on the chain. Um, 
So you can do things like warn people, like this pack sap actually is vegan, vegetarian, whatever, uh, but the product you're trying to, to give them has meat in it. So you can warn them and not throw it on the chain right away. You can do things like, you know, preferences, like I don't like spicy food, hold on, this guy's about to buy some spicy food, maybe he's not aware. Or, hey, we're right, we're out of pizza, we can't give him this guy pizza, so we can tell him right there, rather than process the transaction. Um, now, if, if they were offline, let's say, and he did run the transaction through and the blockchain's caught up, it would never have been added onto the chain, so that guy's money never gets taken, and the pizza never gets um, and then, of course, you can thwart, well, I don't know, I think kids are always going to be able to get alcohol somehow, so maybe this isn't the solution for that, but, you know, you can, you can do the same sort of concept there. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. So, I was hoping to maybe postulate some other use cases for it. Uh, Sean already did with some notarization stuff, but uh, does anyone, maybe some people have read more into this, have some cool use cases they can share? From the Catholic's perspective or Indian? Whatever perspective you want. I think the, the point, just to, before you go into that issue, you should think one of the things we want to try to get out of these, these lunch and learns really is, I think, you know, we sort of sit around and look at blockchain and think, you know, we have a problem to solve, which is connectivity on an aircraft. And um, you know, some people sit, sit around and think that maybe blockchain is a way that we can do that. Um, and I think it's, it's something that I think we want to open up as a dialogue to everybody to have an open conversation about whether these are the types of things that we could be exploring in a unique way to add value to our solution, our new product here in terms of uh, onboard connectivity. Because as, as we've seen here, Blockchain is really the protocol that is used to exchange this currency, which is Bitcoin, which we've always sort of attached to the two go hand in hand. But I think there's, uh, Hank's already shown that there are some other opportunities that you can use blockchain to solve some problems. I guess big picture of the point is that it's uh, for decentralization. Yeah, like, that's, that's the trust problem of decentralization. You, you know what I think, what, I don't think like people actually this now, but I think the cool idea for this, it would be like voting. Because right now, mm. like any elections, anything, here you can cheat it. That's it. Yeah, so and that's it's going to be completely anonymous because it's all, it's all by private public keys and mm -hmm. even by seeing the whole ledger, you wouldn't be able to see who voted what. All you need, all you see is who did this. That's yeah, you're right. I forgot to mention that. So in the example of the, you know, the four people mm -hmm. I gave, I did that for illustration purposes, but even though the transactions broadcast out, they're all anonymized. So the amount and the validity can be held despite knowing who the actual party is. Ashish, I think you had a point? Thought I, and then I interrupted you? Yes, no, I'm sorry. And now you got a mouthful of pizza? <laughs> it's, it's anonymized to the hash, right? So, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. I would say like, let's keep an open mind, let's not restrict ourselves on the own onboard connectivity, because there are other problems also which can be solved with the blockchain. One area which I looked into because we are into onboard retail. And what the retail teams do, the most important thing for them is the customer stickiness. So which was started by the retail as such. So Walmart needs all the customers keep coming back to Walmart. So they introduced the concept of loyalty points. That's how like all the retailers, they were handling this problem of customer stickiness. Currently in our app, as we are going towards more of messenger apps and other things, it's a good point like where we can start some loyalty points, which is more like a cryptocurrency. So each time a customer, when he's buying on my device, I give him four loyalty points. So this way they keep on like mining these uh, loyalty points or they keep on generating these loyalty points. So they'll stick to my app. And then later on, maybe we can sit, uh, sell them some merchandise in exchange of it, or maybe give them some discounts on the flight tickets and other parts. So if you try to explore that part, that can help us in increasing the customer stickiness on our application. So a concept of loyalty points, which is directly mapped to what bitcoins are at this point, and that would be the easiest implementation. So generating our unique hashes for a loyalty point or a loyalty currency, which we can call as a guest logics loyalty currency, and then it can be used as a marketing gimmick also at that point, oh, there are so many users, they can print top 10 in a, every month, like, oh, they, they have a, a earned these many loyalty points. So something of that kind, like that can be grown. So it's just a thought, but that is what I can think, like, 
if we nurture it carefully, it can be grown and maybe in two or three years down the line, that would help us create a guest logics kind of a currency. And when future, which is a digital currency, when we go towards it, maybe five years down the line or six years down the line, that could help us like, like stand better in the industry. So that was one thought on this direction. Regarding the connectivity on the onboard connectivity, because again, all this is a um, distributed ledger. Blockchain, all blockchains are distributed ledgers as such. And all distributed ledgers can't be blockchain, but all blockchains are distributed ledgers. So think of it like currently in our organization also. If there is a payment, it has to be done. It has to be approved at least by the CFO and the CEO. So maybe Kevin is approving it if there is a 100 million payment to be done. So it has to be approved by two of them. So the concept of the distributed ledger works if there are at least like, so we have to set up some business rules. Maybe at least two approvers have to be there. So the concept which we were saying on, over there, on a plane, at least three devices should be there, which are able to talk to each other, and then at least so if two of them approve it, we take it as an approval. So if we are going by that concept, then at least like there has to be three to five devices sitting in a one enclosure or one plane, one way, or any uh, environment. They talked about how the PAX app could help us, and all the passengers on the plane could carry the ledger. So now there's, there are 200 people with the ledger. So again, so over here, the mobile apps, think of it like when this grows, there's a lot of data on it. So all the mobile apps are not going out of mobile phones. If you see like it is downloading more than one MP data, you quickly switch it And there is a space restriction also. So these Well no, it's only for the for the one flight. It would, it would wipe the cash, right? It's only in the one flight. So it's not so much Then it is not a distributed ledger as such. It is just a snapshot of the ledger. Then we are like blockchain is a big blockchain. Then we are just talking about a small sectioning of it. So there can be other ways to handle this problem, but the blockchain does not fit it, fit over there because you are restricting the blockchain to a time interval. Yeah, there's lots of distributed patterns over there. Blockchain is just one type of distributed pattern that is being used for distributed So yeah, I understand your concept. So we can use this kind of a concept, which is a distributed ledger. It is not a blockchain, but we can use a concept of distributed ledger. If we are able to connect, yeah. If we are able to connect to them, if they allow that connectivity to us. There is a lot of issues privacy issues that relaying messages safety the data. But then again, on all the business transactions, there has to be a reliability factor over there. I would not rely on a passenger app as such to get this information, though there is a public key over here because then because whatever is coming from them, I can validate that data, but whatever is going from me to them. They won't be able to yeah, so, so there's there's an interesting point. Like the, some critics of the system, and rightfully so, say that well, if you just have 51 percent of the peers, you vote however you want, right? So if Donald Trump was in the back pocket of uh, Beyonce and Putin there, and he could rig the system so the the Pope goes, I don't think that's right, and everyone's like, Yeah, no, it's right. That's fine. That's a good that transaction. Okay. Then then it could go down, right? So they can all equally modify the chain and win the vote. Um, so some people are worried that the block in Bitcoin case, I'm kind of going back to like the most known implementation, is that it gets so, so big that only a handful of computers on the planet can even store it. So now all you got to do is own 10 of the, you know, uh, 19 and you've got voting rights. So you can just say whatever, you can get all the money. Well, that leads to a question of what happens in 10 years when the, the chain's so long. So I have no idea. I have no idea. Yes, Mr. Carlock? Just a little bit on your question. So specifically for Bitcoin implementation, because what they also do, they A, do security on top of this. So you've got a very quiet voice. So okay. <laughs> so, so basically on top of this, they do uh, public private security keys but also what they do they actually cut pieces of the chains they take the block and they apply some mechanism to kind of shrink it down to hash so basically everybody has to do has to have a chain that will confirm the validity of somebody else's chain but they're not going to have the details right and details are going to be distributed like whatever they should be because 
I personally don't need to know about everybody else's transactions. I, all I need to know is I have to validate that the chain that provided to me <coughs> is valid. And that's a way simpler task than knowing everybody else's transactions. I think again, too, to reel it back a little bit to our problems as well, and I think there's some valid points out there about the, the sizes and the issues of a large chain like a Bitcoin chain. But if we, and I think we're, you know, discussions like Chris has brought up here about using that on board of an aircraft to solve some of our issues, I think is, is one that I think is worth exploring and, and to kind of continue the dialogue on that topic particularly. So I, I kind of roll that out to everybody to uh, continue. I mean, we don't have a lot of time left. Um, and I know that Kevin's checking to see how much this meeting's costing us all in terms of labor <laughs> hours. Yep, he's checking. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, any, any other comments or? So I, I have one closing point. So um, I didn't want to get back into the economics of this. I didn't want to like get everyone thinking about Bitcoins again. Um, but what I looked into to have done for today was like a guess logic box. So just everyone starts off with the same amount of coins and you can trade them internally in your organization. And they mean as much as we want them to mean. So I mean, initially, you know, people were buying pizzas for 2,000 Bitcoins. If we kind of it's, you know, make this fun game of like, you know, good work on that presentation. Here's, here's a couple bucks, you know. Put your number, put your wallet number, and everyone can chip you a couple bucks, and we create this little economy in here while also kind of understanding, you know, this new fangled cryptocurrency you can't get through your news feed without seeing it. So I'll, I'll, I'm looking into it. I don't know. I think it's going to be harder than I thought. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very good. Any, uh, any closing remarks before we, we shut down our first uh, live cast? Anybody on, uh, I'd be curious to find out about the quality of the, the simulcast because I think we're going to be using this for you know, our company huddles and, and other events too so that we can... And, and quality of the picture, not of the presenter. Right. <laughs> yeah, present, yeah. Quality of the picture, the sound, I think, um, you know, stuff like that. But uh, we're, you know, like everything else here, we're going to keep enhancing this and you know, we were hoping to get a, a proper mic and so that. But um, anyway, enjoy the rest of the lunch. I think that's good. And, and uh, you know, thanks for the 10 people. We had 10 people watching it live. So that's, that's kind of... That's a new record. Yeah, that's, that's, that's our new... That's new exactly. So the, la the last thing I will say on this topic, though, is that, you know, the, the Lunch and Learns are going to be a monthly event right now. So um, I what I'm going to pose out to, the, to everybody is if there's a topic that is of great interest to you, whether you're on the tech team or not, um, send me a, a, a quick message on that and, and uh, we'll look at creating a bit of a schedule. So the next topic is, is sort of up for grabs. If it's something that you're interested in, you think there's val validity to, send me, some, uh, send me a message and, and let's uh, get the next one on the books, the next topic. So. Uh, I think Hank's done a great job, especially being the first to go. <laughs> and certainly set the bar uh, pretty high for this, but I, I expect the, these only to get better and more exciting. So thanks again, everybody, and good job. Hank, way to go. And uh, thanks for all you guys who logged in. Some, thanks for those points, guys. Uh, I think next time we're going to be we're going to be issuing out a a link to the slideshow. We just uh, it was tough because we, we didn't realize that the background was uh, all white was tough to do video. Against. Thanks, guys. Great job. You got a great job from Paige. <laughs> Yes, I yeah, yeah. This is now we're into the behind the scenes. Yeah. After the, <laughs> After the final rose. After the final, yeah. yeah. Putting all my money in Bitcoin. Yeah. Oh, you should oh, too. Yeah. yeah. 100%. But, uh...